for this week's episode. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do the first episode of the Sad Apple Year without the... <laughs> what? <laughs> without your friendly neighborhood lawyer, man. I even wore my formal attire for New Year's. He doesn't even know what series this is. Who invited this guy? <laughs> Hi, my lovelies. It's time for... Stop, this is not your channel. You can make your own channel. Hi, my lovelies. It's Rebecca Rogers. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Regardless, I'm so happy that you're here. And per popular demand, we also have Avery Rogers. And it's Tuesday, meaning it's apple picking day. People send in stories where they're not sure if they acted appropriately or not. They want to know if they're the good apple, the bad apple, the crab apple, and we give our opinions. Sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't and sometimes you guys might have different experiences that change your opinions and that's okay. We learn from each other through conversation. So without further ado, let's get started with this week's episode of Am I the Bad Apple? Let's go apple picking. Apple number one. Am I the bad apple for saying no to a Disney trip? My male 28, wife 28 female, and I have two daughters, six and five years old, which is prime Disney age. They're both super into princesses and all that. We've talked about taking them to Disney over the next few years as we know they'd love it. My wife has never been before and I've only been once when I was 10 years old. It was definitely a memorable trip for me as my family had to save up for a while for it. We've always known that Disney would be our first big trip as a family with our girls. In July, my father-in-law got diagnosed with prostate cancer. After a few rounds of chemo and some rather intense days at the hospital, it's only gotten worse. It spread across to other organs in his body and rather than trying to suffer through it, he's opted to just do chemo and try to live with what time he has left. As a result, him and my mother-in-law have decided to make more memorable memories with family. One of these memories, apparently, is to take our daughters to Disney and surprise them with the trip yesterday during Christmas. At first, I thought my wife would be against this as well. I mean, we've always said we wanted to get to experience taking them and seeing our daughters' faces for the first time at the parks. However, I found out that my mother-in-law cleared it with my wife last month. My wife didn't even tell me. I guess she thought I would be surprised and excited for our daughters. I sat through the whole rest of the night just sitting on it and when we got home, we had a serious discussion about this. I told my wife I don't want our daughter's first trip to Disney to be without us. She asked why don't we just go along with them, but this trip is in February and booking flights and hotels and tickets just for my wife and I for the time they're all going is gonna be almost $5,000. I told my wife that we're gonna have to talk to her parents and decline the trip, but my wife is saying that I'm being selfish and heartless by robbing our daughters of this experience and robbing them of a core memory with my father-in-law before he passes away. Am I being out of line here? Am I the bad apple? Again, we don't have children. I can understand a parent's frustration of wanting to be there for all the firsts, you know, whether it be first steps or first day of school or first trip to Disney. I feel like that's a reasonable thing to be upset about in general, but I personally feel like these are very extreme circumstances. This isn't just an in-law that wants the attention for themselves, because we've seen plenty of those, right? We've seen plenty of mother-in-laws or grandparents or father or whoever just wanting all the attention and all the excitement all for themselves and it's not their child. I don't feel like that's the case here. I mean, this poor guy is never gonna get to go on another trip with them, ever. The kids are gonna be losing their granddad. The wife is gonna be losing her father. I don't see anything wrong personally with them wanting to create that kind of core memory and last trip with the father-in-law before he passes. Again, I know that there's plenty of examples of in-laws and grandparents who are overstepping boundaries and trying to be a part of firsts and taking those experiences away from parents where they shouldn't. I just don't see this experience as the same thing. I think it's special circumstances. And can you imagine having to tell those kids Hey, you know, you're actually not going to Disney because I want to be the one to take you. Do you not think that's selfish? I can see it from his perspective. I mean, I can. I can see why he would be upset and disappointed. I'm not saying I can't see that. 
Again, this is their first trip to Disney. This was a big trip to him as a kid. But again, I think that these are special circumstances. I'm 26 years old. My face still lights up when I walk into Magic Kingdom and see the castle. I know that he wants to see them get excited for the first time, but they're going to most likely still be just as excited in a couple years when they can go. Well, let me bring it up okay. this way and see if this makes sense. So when you take someone to Disney, I wouldn't go personally if they were five or six because they're not gonna remember anything, they're not gonna get to do all that stuff. Most of what you would be doing is just kind of walking around because they're not gonna remember it all, their memory is gonna be very limited, they're gonna have like a couple core things. Like there's that commercial that goes on, the father's like, yeah, we went to this amazing trip and I remember all the beauty and the scenery and we went snorkeling and the, the kid's like, I remember turtles. <laughs> I remember going with my parents when I was probably eight, and I can remember the stroller. I, I have some very core, like, some of the characters and things like that, but I, I don't remember anything about the parks, etc. And then we went again when I was 16 with a couple of my cousins and friends, and I remember almost the whole trip. So I initially thought the inverse, like, why would you take him as a kid in the first place? But then I thought I was a male raised as, like, a, a very boyish boy. And these are girls that are very into Disney, and this is like their Disney princess phase, right? Right. And when you get to be an angsty teenager, then things may change a little bit for girls as opposed to boys. Not that it has to be that way, but if they're very Disney prone princess right now, maybe this is a more special time for them, and maybe he wants to have the Disney princess phase. But you gotta imagine, he goes every single day and they're watching the movies and doing things like that, so he wants to experience that. Understandable, but why can't they not just go next year or the year after? Not much in that Disney Princess phase is going to change from 6 to 7 or 5 to 6, you know? Why can they just not go another year? Because Grandfather is not going to have that opportunity. If they were planning on taking the kids anyway, they should have talked to him and maybe they could have planned to go and like, you know, later in the year when he had time off or they could have planned. But they did talk to the wife. And the wife, clearly they were not planning on doing And the doing wife something. did not communicate with him. Yes, but clearly they as a couple were not planning on going anytime soon. Maybe the phase is going to be different in a couple years, but they're not going right now anyways. But it sounds like he had it planned for the next, like, five, six is perfect age. Okay, he wants to go in the next five or six years. Just go then. That's not what I heard when you read it. it sounded like there was some sort of pending trip and that they, it was going to be this year or in this age. I think he's saying that yes, this is a good age to take them, but there's not a pending trip. There's no mention of a pending trip. It's just mentioning, well, I wanted to be there the first time. Well, why don't you just go again? Even if they had a plan, a trip planned for in six months, why not just go again? Like you say, they're so young, they're not gonna remember. Okay, so then it'll be just like they've never been before. Do you remember Ryan Kelly? Youth Pastor Ryan, mm -hmm. my friend. And he was hanging out with Spider-Man at the park and Spider-Man remembered these kids an entire weekend and they just kept getting more excited and more excited and more excited. Proof that kids are just gonna keep getting more excited. It's not like their second time to Disney is gonna be any less special. But it shows that, you know, they saw Spider-Man three times in one weekend and they just kept getting more and more and more excited, which is great, but that also shows that just because they saw him one time does not mean they're not excited to see him a second time. Mm -hmm. So I, again, I'm just not understanding why the guy can't just take them again, whether it be in a year, whether it be in two years or three years or whatever. I don't understand why he's so upset when grandpa won't have that chance. Let's take your example where they go and they see Spider-Man three times and get super excited all on the same trip. In this, they would come back to the father who didn't get to go experience anything with them and tell them all the great things they did, all the exciting, fun, uh -huh. etc. Is that not just going to make him feel worse and make it... Would you rather the kids not get to have those good experiences because you have FOMO? Like, to mean, me, that's kind of selfish. Of I would rather you have not had that life-changing experience because I also didn't get to experience it. I mean, it's it. just something to consider. He's going to remember it. The kids yes. are not going to. I remember meeting Belle when I was young. 
I remember going and finding her. I, we, it was when the, the characters still roamed the parks. So you didn't wait in line to meet them. I looked through that entire park for her and I found her by the water and I remember it vividly. Do you remember anything else about the other parks? I remember the Epcot light show the first time that I saw it. I remember the Aladdin carpet ride. I remember meeting Belle. I remember Chip and Dale at breakfast in Mini at breakfast. I even remember the hotel that we stayed in. So you got like six things. The last time we went, when I, we were adults, I could about map out the entire park. I understand. Different. And I was just as excited when we went as adults as when but we were that like- That was my point. Those few core memories that they're gonna remember, he's not gonna have with them. But then that's selfish of, I would rather you not have these few core memories because but I want to They are them. going to get them. Why can't they just have them twice? It's not like it's costing him anything extra for them to get an extra experience. To me, that's selfish. That is robbing them of extra experiences that could change their day, their life. Like they could remember those memories forever with their grandfather who is dying all because he wants it first. So I say bad apple. You don't have to agree with me. You can say something else and that's okay. I just think he's being very selfish. You've been waiting to disagree with me for two weeks. You can disagree with me. I was just playing devil's advocate mostly, but when I initially heard the story, I would have said crab apple just because, okay. I mean, his point is justified. I don't know if that's what I would do, but I could see a lot of other people agreeing that it makes sense, especially with an in-law instead of an actual parent. I know the situation's a little more extreme in this case because there is some dire circumstances to it. Crab apple, the parents should have come and talked to him too. Look at us disagreeing on something, finally. <laughs> I say bad apple, Avery says crab apple. Yeah. What do you guys think? Which of us do you agree with more? Apple number two. Am I the bad apple for not wanting to pay my neighbor for lawn work? I, 47 female, and my husband have lived in our house for five years, and our neighbor and I get along pretty great. We only have one thing that we really disagree on, and that's the lawn. He obsesses over his lawn, mows it almost daily, rakes leaves on a daily basis, and asks me regularly if my lawn guy is coming this week. For a little context, my husband is a truck driver and is only home once a month and I work full time and so I have a lawn guy, but we only really use him March through October. Now, I could not care less about the leaves. The entire lawn could catch on fire and as long as the house was safe, I wouldn't care. My neighbor, however, hates when any of my leaves blow up against his fence. I was pretty good about keeping up with it and Till about last year. Last November, I opened up a boutique and an accounting office. I worked six to seven days a week and barely had times for the stuff that I cared about, let alone things I didn't. One Saturday last year, I looked outside and my neighbor was raking my leaves. I thought, okay, good for him. I was worried he might fall and hurt himself. I mean, he's an 80 year old man, but I was inside doing the laundry and all the inside chores that I actually care about. Later in the month, my neighbor came up to me and asked me to pay him. Of course I was annoyed, but I just paid him thinking it was a one-off thing. Well, this year is even busier. I'm running both businesses and my elderly father is in the hospital and is now in rehab for physical therapy. I'm doing a lot of running around back and forth between his house and my office and my house. This past Sunday, my neighbor's out in my yard again, working on my leaves without even talking to me about it. Then he tells me he's gonna have to charge me more this year than he did last year because of all the extra work. My husband was out of work with breakdowns for three weeks last month and not at home though, but certainly wasn't able to work and money's really tight. I never asked him to do our leaves. I never asked him to do anything with our lawn and I don't wanna pay him. Am I the bad apple that I don't wanna pay him to do a job that I never wanted him to do in the first place? Would you like to start us off? He's just doing a good deed and expects to get paid for it. It's nothing that says he should get paid for it. I really like what you just said, actually. The whole idea of just because you do a good deed doesn't mean there's a prize at the end. I think that's a really good lesson. Like, just a life lesson in general. I love that. I'm smart. <laughs> 
She never hired him, she never asked him to do it, and honestly, it's none of his business what goes on in her lawn and what doesn't. I'm assuming they live in a neighborhood with like an HOA, because most neighborhoods I think have homeowners associations. And if her leaves aren't violating any of that, then it's not his business. But yeah, that one seemed really easy to me. Well, I'm going good apple. Do I have to say it? Yeah. It's your vote. Sad apple. Why sad apple? You can't- no chaos in fire. You can't just come up with a new apple that doesn't fit. The leaves could have just caught on fire. A good yeah. apple, I guess. Apple number three. Am I the bad apple for ruining my friend's future? I, 19 female, am a sophomore in college and have a friend, Tia, who's 18 female. Tia's in high school and applying for colleges and scholarships. I've helped her throughout the whole college process and she ended up getting into early college to her top school and even got a full ride scholarship. I was so happy for her until recently. I was talking to a mutual friend of ours and she started gushing about how amazing Tia's essay was and how it was so heartfelt and beautiful. I was intrigued and asked to see it because I guess Tia just forgot to show me. She showed me many of her essay drafts before but I hadn't read this one yet. As I was reading it, I was completely taken aback. The essay was one of my college essay drafts which I'd shown her for references on writing techniques only. I made that clear, she was not to use my papers. I was livid. The essay was extremely personal and she barely even tweaked it up a bit. It was almost entirely copy and pasted. I trusted her with it and this is what she did? In a fit of rage, I gathered all the evidence of me helping her with the college process, including evidence of me sending this specific essay to her, and I showed it to the school. She not only lost her scholarship, but also her seat in that school. Now people are calling me dramatic and shaming me for robbing Tia of her education. She's the only person in her family to get into college and receive an academic and athletic scholarship. Everyone was rooting for her and I was too at one time, but not anymore. And while I didn't expect the outcome to be so severe, it was. Right now, I feel bad. I feel terrible. But I also feel like she took advantage of me. That also doesn't mean I wanted to be the cause of something so horrible and drastic. I did myself a justice, but at the cost of someone else's dreams. Now I'm wondering if what I did was justified or not. So, am I the bad apple? I mean, I can see why she would feel bad about it, etc. But she didn't do anything wrong. If it's a heartfelt, personal essay for a college draft, uh -huh. and she took it word for word, it simply couldn't be true, right? They couldn't have the exact same experience. Okay. It's just a lie. She gets this big scholarship, which I don't know. It doesn't say anything about the other person getting anything or even applying for it, etc. So we won't assume that. But she's getting all of these acclimates and praise, a big scholarship and the, you know, this great opportunity for plagiarism. I know from personal experience how frustrating and demoralizing it is to work so hard for something and to create something yourself and for other people to reap the benefits and get the credit. It is one of the worst feelings ever. And Tia knew it was wrong. She knew it was wrong because she didn't show her. She knew that her friend wasn't gonna be okay with it. I have a lot of trouble supporting Tia's actions in any way because again, just based off of my experience, like for me, it's hard to not personally insert myself in that kind of thing because I've just had that experience. Oh yeah, I think we can agree she's bad, but that's not yes, the question. Yes, but if she couldn't get in on her own merit, would she have even succeeded at this school? I she mean, got in and got her scholarship based off of this essay. Would she have even been able to thrive in this school if she couldn't even get in on her own merit? I'm a firm believer that things like that are not as important. Like school is, as bad as it's going to sound, to some degree arbitrary because a lot of it you're not going to remember and you're not going to use. You go True. and you specialize for the most part or you do some kind of job that's a technical job. I think school is really to learn how to work hard, work efficiently, learn how to exert yourself properly and learn priorities. I think if she had taken and put in the effort in that she could have done it, I don't think that's an issue. But 
is she gonna take the dishonesty and the plagiarism and things into the future? That's more where I was thinking. I see your point, and I'm not necessarily saying that Tia would have been unable on her own. It's more of that she felt that her own work couldn't get her into the school. And sometimes these essays do make a difference when it comes to the admissions process. So I'm thinking more of would she have gotten in with her own essay? Would it have been good enough? And if she now has it stuck in her head of I need other people's work to thrive, like kind of along what you were saying, would that have continued? If she doesn't, if her writing isn't as strong and that's why she took someone else's essays, would she be able to continue doing well in that kind of environment? The situation is sad. Like, yeah, everyone was rooting for her and her family was probably so proud of her, but no one messed it up other than Tia. Tia stole someone else's work and called it her own and she got caught. So I think what she's asking us to determine is... Was she wrong for turning her in? knowing that the consequences were so extreme. Well, she didn't know they were going to be that extreme. She said a few That's times. That's true, but it's already happened. Even though they were friends, it doesn't make sense to me that you would call out a random stranger, you would call out a classmate that you didn't like so much, but you wouldn't call out someone who's supposed to be your friends. So many times, you know, I have had a lot of people in my life who, because we're friends, think that that means that they can just stomp all over my heart and soul. Those people aren't your friends. So I don't personally think she was the bad apple. I think Tia took advantage of her kindness. She was helping her through the whole process. She was coaching her. Again, I'm feeling very personal to this story. I can't tell you how many times when one of my people needs something from me, I will pour my whole heart and soul into it. And as Avery knows, I've had so many experiences where that is taken advantage of or thrown back in my face. And those people aren't really your friends. I have to go good apple and I know that I'm seeing this situation very personally. That point also carries with the inverse argument. Because it was her friend and someone who was supposed to be so close, etc., many people would feel that you do give a little more for a friend or a family member or something you're so close to that maybe she should have thought a bit more about what the consequences could be and maybe this was a thing where you go and just say, hey, don't let it happen again. Or you go and talk to her first and be like, hey, why did you do this? Give me an explanation. Instead of just being like, oh yeah, I went and got everything because I was upset. I sent the email before I thought about it. I guess for me, I see it more as a, in that moment, she realized Tia wasn't a friend. I definitely wouldn't fault anyone for disagreeing with us. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would say crab apple, and I could totally see your point. I just don't agree. Let us know in the comments what you think. Y'all get so personal with some of these stories, you can't fault me for struggling with one of my own, okay? Apple number four. Am I the bad apple for bursting my cousin's bubble? My 24 female sister, 30 female, is getting married. Her and her fiance are going all out. No expenses spared, just like she's always said she would. It's gonna be an extravagant event with hundreds of guests and she's thrilled planning it. Our antisocial cousin, 31 male, makes pretty good money as a software engineer, but he has no social awareness and is extremely cheap. He would literally sleep on a dirty mattress on the floor with nothing in his house but a TV and a console. I mean, that's what he was doing before they met. He thinks dressing presentably and having a decent home is materialistic. Now, my sister and I happily identify as materialistic, but he means it in a negative way when he says it. Since my sister started planning her wedding, she's been gushing about it to me and some of our other family and friends, but he always butts in with some snarky remark about how weddings are stupid and what kind of stupid woman would spend tens of thousands of dollars on weddings and brags about how he married his wife last year in their backyard and her ring was $200 from a strip mall and she was ecstatic. Today, my sister was gushing to me and my mom and some female cousins about her bachelorette party. My cousin came in and interrupted the whole thing to brag that his wife never had a bachelorette party and would never want one because they're such a waste of money and she's so much more practical and less materialistic than most women. I decided to let him know how his wife really felt since she complains all the time about him and his cheap habits. 
I told him what actually happened on their wedding day. Hours before the ceremony, when my sister and I and our cousins were helping the bride get ready at their house, she went to the backyard, saw how cheap it was, checkered white red plastic barbecue tables, and burst into tears. She was sobbing about how deeply ashamed she felt that her family and friends from college were gonna see their cheapskate $700 wedding and see her walk through her own backyard in a $90 dollar store dress dressed like a middle schooler at prom. She said she thought her wedding would be special and if she knew it would be this way, she would have eloped rather than feel humiliated in front of everybody she knew. So she's just as materialistic as normal people are. Why does he think she told people not to take pictures on their wedding day? He was livid, ranting that he spent $700 to give her a nice wedding and he's not gonna waste his money on something so stupid, so how dare I say that about his now wife? He said no one cares about weddings and materialistic parties. He's like a child with having no concept of money or taste. I informed him the average cost of a wedding is $34,000. He humiliated his wife and their wedding was the type caddy people will gossip about for years. He was so mad that he drove home through the snow. Was I the bad apple? Shouldn't he have just butted out? I don't understand why the cousin has to make it his business how much someone else is spending on their wedding and I don't understand why they have to make it their business to tell him that his wife hated the wedding. Cause now I know they wanted to slight the cousin, but it's really throwing the wife under the bus and is now causing an issue between them. The only person who really loses here is the cousin's wife and she's not involved in this at all. Cause you really think he's not gonna go back home and like, well, this is what they said. What did you think of the wedding and cause an argument between them? I feel like no one here is minding their business and everyone is inserting themselves into each other's issues. And I feel like the only one who's really losing here that didn't do anything is the cousin's wife. I remember when we were planning our wedding and even on our wedding day, when there were last minute things and changes and whatever, and I had a full on panic about this is our wedding, it's supposed to be perfect, it's supposed to be a specific way. And looking back now, how long have we been married? Almost four years. None of those things matter because we got married and that's the whole point. And it didn't matter who spoke at the wedding. It didn't matter what color things were. Like that doesn't matter now. We're married. I guess, I don't feel like I'm qualified to talk on this issue. Why? Because I have no opinions. You don't? Well, what do you think about what they said to I just feel like they were trying to one up each other. And yes. That's about all there was to it. I don't think it has anything to do with the weddings. And all this nonsense. Yes. I think I, the cousin wanted to be some sort of a part of things that were going on, but he doesn't really know how to interact with them and just talk to them, or maybe they had a weird relationship anyway. And then she just wanted to tell him the whole time about how everything needed to be so nice and pricey and all this, and they were just, I guess, feuding. I do think they have more issues than just this. Like, I think that they just don't really like each other very much. Because even think about how she described him of he's antisocial and he's cheap and they clearly have very different views on life. I don't think they like each other very much. And that's okay, you don't have to be best friends with all your cousins and all your family. But I feel like they both overstepped to the point that they just wanted to jab at each other. But in her jabbing, she ended up hurting someone else. And that's messed up to me. I think they both suck, to be honest. I'm going bad batch. On the other hand, him going back and forth with her, they're only gonna hurt the... Something's gonna happen where her wedding's gonna go bad too, or they're gonna say something that hurts her as well. So it's only third parties that's gonna get exactly. they're just, from this, I guess. They're feuding with each other, and the collateral is gonna come from if something goes wrong with the sister's wedding, he's gonna poke fun, just like the sister is poking fun at the cousin's wife. Like, they're just hurting everyone around them, trying to upset each other. And why would you go out of your way to upset people, anyways? I'm just thinking of, you're considering, oh, they're hurting everybody else. The question it's, it's, she's asking is, am I bad for hurting his feelings? It's not necessarily that. It's, for me, they're both just going out of their way to upset each other. Why? That doesn't make you the good person. 
I don't really have that. an opinion. I was just thinking, you know, she you, asked a specific question. You have to have an opinion. This is the Sad. rules. The one rules is we all get an opinion. Sad apples. That there is no sad apple. Rad apples. <laughs> no. We'll go with bad apple. That's fine. It's a bad batch. Chaos and fire. Every yeah. Chaos and fire. Those are our votes. We would love to hear yours. Did you agree with me or with Avery or with neither of us at all? Let us know in the comments. You know, we love to read your responses. I'd rather see something funny. You can give me your opinion, but I want a joke. Okay, tell me your opinions. Tell Avery a joke. We're both going to go through them. We hope your first week of 2023 is going well and that you're doing all the things that you want to do and are making big plans for this year. I know we are. And we hope to see you guys next week. As always, if you want one of your stories to possibly feature on Am I the Bad Apple, you can submit your story at my subreddit r slash Am I the Bad Apple. And we hope to see you guys next week. Bye, my lovelies. Mwah.